we're about to witness a culinary revolution. Tonight, five of the most talented cooking prodigies in the world go head-to-head -head against executive chefs with years of training and decades of experience. Prodigies, as far as I'm concerned, that's just the title. I think they're gonna be nervous, and I think they're gonna be scared. I don't wanna be treated like a kid. I'm a chef. You just can't underestimate these kids. I'm gonna crush that competition. It's a culinary showdown in three rounds, with our final round judged by the world's most critically acclaimed chefs and a winner takes all blind taste test. It's the superstars of tomorrow. Way to get in his head. Against the titans of today. Coming down to the wire. I want to show the world that kids can take down executive chefs. This is cutting it so close. This is man versus child. Chef showdown. I'm your host, Adam Gertler, and this week it's a culinary showdown in three rounds. Our first judge is chef owner of several restaurants, including Graffiato and Kopnos, Mike Isabella. Our second judge is a butcher and private chef to Hollywood A-listers, Ali Azain. Our next challenger is a six-time winner of the Chef Celebration Competition in San Diego. Trained in the classic French tradition, he spent five years in South America finding his own style. I live primarily in Santiago, Chile. I think when you travel abroad and you see what other people eat, it really opens up your eyes. The fact that these kids are prodigies, as far as I'm concerned, that's just a title. These kids are definitely messing with the wrong chef. I've been cooking longer than some of these kids have been around. Oh, I know I got this. Uh, I wouldn't be here if I didn't think I could win this. Please welcome Chef Augie Salcedo. Uh, prodigies, who's it going to be? Experience. I really a big kickstart. Chef Augie definitely has lots of skill. He's award winning. This round is going to be tough. We choose Chef Holden. Woo! Chef Holden can really handle somebody very experienced in the first round. So we sent him because we need to let Chef Augie know immediately that we are not playing around. Our next prodigy is an overachiever, some might say. I'm into everything, pretty much. Plays, robotics, cooking, of course. I work really hard to improve myself and be master of many skills. I am not afraid of going bold. Please welcome Chef Holden. <laughs> Chef Augie's had a lot of experience, so I really have to win this round because we need the menu board in the next. He looks like a smart kid but he doesn't have the experience, so that's where I have the advantage. This should be a breeze. Welcome to round one, chefs. Like revenge, some dishes are best served cold. Carpaccios, cold soba noodles. There are literally hundreds of dishes that can stand to have a little chillin'. For this challenge, you will have to prepare a cold dish for our judges. Sounds good. A raw dish or a cold dish, if made right, and is very flavorful, I'm eager and ready to go. The flavors that people usually get from cooking things and getting color on things is not an option. What really matters is being innovative and creating flavors without heat. And I know my flavors. You want to be able to work with a lot of different things to incorporate the flavor into a cold dish because it does not hold as much flavor as a hot dish. Remember that cold dishes take more salt. Good luck, Chef. This is one cold-blooded challenge, and I really love it. The judge's critique is based on creativity, presentation, adherence to the spirit of the challenge, and of course, taste. They will also allow the chef with the best dish to choose an advantage in the next round. Remember, whoever scores an advantage this round has a better chance of keeping the advantage for the all-important winner-takes-all third round, which will be presented and blind tasted by our master level chef. Okay, chefs, please take to the burners and prepare to begin your first cook. You have 30 minutes to prepare a cold dish. Your time starts now. Originally, I started cooking because my dad was in the hotel business. We would always go to new restaurants and find the best food in the LA area where I discovered steak tartare. I'm planning to make a steak tartare with Ethiopian spice, toasted naan with a quail egg yolk and a watercress salad. First thing that came to my head immediately was gazpacho. If made right, it's very flavorful, has a lot of ingredients. There's a lot of balance of heat and sweet at the same time. So 
I take the tomatoes and just dump them into the blender, blend it, get it into the refrigerator. I've done this before. People have loved this dish in my restaurants that I've served it at. It's a no-brainer. I've got 15 years experience as an executive chef. 30 minutes, really, I mean, if I can't make a gazpacho in 10, <laughs> maybe I should be one of the kids. To flavor a steak tartare, I put some clarified butter, a mustard seed in a pan, and add heat until the mustard seed starts to pop. Then I take it off the heat and immediately add my Berber spice. Berber spice is a mixture of different spices that will give it this Ethiopian flavor. How does it taste? It needs more Berber spice. We've got to add some crunch and some bite to my gazpacho. So I take some cucumber, I take some apples, and you know, I dice them very, very soft and very, very nice. And I'm going to use it as my garnish. What is that, filet? Yes, yeah, filet. Filet mignon, my favorite. I love filet mignon. Yeah, that's my favorite cut. The most important thing when it comes to raw foods is getting the highest quality you can. Fresh ingredients make for the best flavors. It's good that he's killing off the fat. No one wants a chunk of raw fat. But... I really need to spend as much time as possible to create the perfect cubes. And if it's not perfect, I'm not too happy. So how important is uh, knife work in a good tartare? Very, very, very important. You want everything to be cut perfectly so you get uniform bites all throughout eating the tartare. You want to cut it into like nice, small, individual pieces so you're not chewing on the meat or just kind of like melts in your mouth. I knew I needed to infuse some heat into the into the gazpacho. Is that sambal? Yes, sir. Chili sambal. I'm giving you a little bit of heat and spice. Yeah. Oh. I use honey, so I wanted to kind of balance out the heat with the sweetness. All right, you're about to puree your soup right now. I puree it just enough so that there's still some crunch and some bite to it. And then I immediately want to get into the refrigerator because it's a cold dish. I need to be able to serve that cold. I really need to make sure that I show off my unique flavors and I don't have any bitterness to my steak tartare. So I'm going to make a watercress salad with watercress, lemon juice, extra virgin olive oil, and a bit of salt. Looks like Chef Augie pulled out some hamachi on his side of the station. Hamachi is a beautiful fish, especially served raw. I wanted to use hamachi because hamachi is very buttery, and I wanted to add that flavor of hamachi to my gazpacho. Traditional beef tartare should be served with bread. My dish is Ethiopian, so I'm thinking naan. I brush on a bit of my clarified butter Berber spice mixture, then I throw it in the oven. How are we doing, Chip Holden? Great. All right, talk to me about what you're working on. A steak tartare with Ethiopian spices. Are you seeing it using naan as a bread? Is that traditional? It is not. Non-traditional? <laughs> is it more pressure for the prodigies to compete in the first round when you don't really know what kind of competition you're going against? Yes, very much so. Are you feeling the pressure right now? Yes. Chef Augie seems really confident and he is very fast. I really need to focus on my dish. I do not want to let my team down. Very excited to try your tartare. Thank you. Good luck. You have 11 minutes remaining. OK. Chef Augie, how are you doing? I'm doing good. This is fun right now. I'm in my element. How is the hamachi playing into the gazpacho? Uh, I'm just going to use that as a garnish on top of the gazpacho. Oh, wonderful. So, yeah, so as you bite into the gazpacho, you'll have some crunch, you'll have some flavor, you'll have some seasoning. It's, it's going to be very nice. How are the chickpeas playing into it? Those aren't chickpeas. Oh, what are those? <laughs> those are nuts. Oh, those are nuts. Oh, hazelnuts. Hazelnuts, yeah. OK, those are just for you to snack on. No, I'm hungry. You know, I haven't had breakfast this morning. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Very excited to see what you come up with. Thank you. You have eight and a half minutes left, Chef. Good luck. OK, perfect. Thank you. Holden, is your quail egg going to be raw? Yes. Cool. As the best. I'm going to use a quail egg as a garnish. I separate the yolk because the yolk will give so much flavor into what's underneath. I'm really looking forward to winning this round. I know if I win this round, it sets the tone, and it's going to give me the menu board, uh, which is something that I really feel I've got to have. Two minutes. Time to be plating. I'm a little bit worried. I'm running low on time. I really need to focus on my dish, or I might not get this done in time. There's really not much left to do, and that's why I kind of wanted to go over and see what the young man was doing. How are you doing, man? Fine. I really want to win this, but I'm getting distracted. Are you already done? Yeah, pretty much. Augie's finished early. This guy's good. Very nice. Chef Augie is really confident. Maybe he's being a little too cocky. I don't know. One minute, chefs. One minute. I have to get finished with my plating. But it's really difficult to focus with a really skilled executive chef 
right next to me. I'm really nervous. I cannot break this yoke because I have no backup plan. Chef Holden's cage visibly rattled. I don't know if we can beat him. He's no joke. One minute, chefs, one minute. I have to get finished with my plating, but it's really difficult to focus with a really skilled executive chef right next to me. I'm really nervous. 30 seconds left, 30 seconds in round one. I had heard something about one of the youngest chefs uh, taking a banana and eating it when she was done early with her dish. So I said, you know what, let's eat a banana. Esty. You just ate a banana. You cannot see the banana right now. Hey, that's my thing. I'm the banana master. I'm a little worried if Chef Augie can back up all of his confidence. You know, this could be a pretty good competition for us. Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. Step away from the dishes. My dish is very close to perfection, if not perfection. But I think I've got more ingredients, I've got more components. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking I've got this. OK, chefs, please bring your plates up to the judges. Chef Holden, what have you made for us today? Here I have prepared a steak tartare with Ethiopian spices, toasted naan, and a watercress salad. Thank you, chef. Chef Holden, I appreciate all the time that you allowed to plate this. You can see all the different elements of the dish. Good job. Everything's clean and tight. Everything looks great. Getting the naan, as well as the watercress salad, and the steak tartare should really be a flavorful experience. I just hope it tastes great to the judges. Chef Holden, your knife work was perfect with this dish. Very important with tartare. Kind of took like a classic tartare and you twisted it with the Berber spice. I will say that you said Berber. I was expecting like this really intense heat. Taste it, but I want a little bit spicier. Chef Holden, I really enjoyed your dish today. The tartare was cut nice. I love the balance on the salad when you ate it all together. Tartare itself could have used a little more like creaminess, richness. I know that you had the yolk on top, but it still needed a little plain olive oil. But overall, it's a very good tartare. I didn't want it to be that oily. I really wanted to feature the steak, but he's right. Steak tartars usually have a lot of fat in them. I still think I can win. Chef Augie, what have you made for us today? So I did a vine ripened tomato gazpacho with hamachi crudo, uh, cucumbers, and apples. Chef Agu, this is a very beautiful presentation. I really like that you kind of have everything centered. I like how you put the bread on the outside for the puree. I'm excited about the hamachi. My general strategy is simplicity. If you keep the dish simple, everything else will just fall in place. And they're going to love this. Chef Agu, I really enjoyed this dish. You had this little bit of spiciness to it. This was really nice. You had all these different textures going on. You had the fish. You had the, the crunch from the raw veg that you put in there. I wasn't expecting the soup to be quite as sweet as it was. I think if you had maybe left out the honey because you have the sweetness from the apple, I think it would have balanced out perfectly. Chef Agu, I thought the hamachi was so good and it helped balance everything out. When I got the hamachi and the apples and the, and the gazpacho and I ate it all together, it was a perfect bite. But because the hamachi was just a garnish, when I didn't get it all together, it could be a little bit sweet on your palate. I was kind of offended by that. The whole idea is for you to mix everything and try everything together. So do your job. <laughs> Chefs, both of these are great examples of two cold dishes. So give me and Ali a minute to discuss. There's clearly three ingredients on his plate, the meat, some bread, and some greens. Any 14-year-old could put that together. This is an easy win. We really have to win this round because we need to show Chef Augie we're for real. We're not your normal throw everything into a bowl, kids. Mike, Alia, who gets to pick an advantage from the menu for the next round? We've decided the advantage goes to. We've decided the advantage goes to. Chef Holden. Yeah! Chef Augie made a really well done dish, and I still pulled out the win. So we get the menu board in the second round, and that's awesome. It was very, very close. Both were really, really good dishes. It was splitting hairs. That's why we really broke down your dishes. I definitely don't agree with the judge's decision. I was trying to be nice the first round. Now it's going to get ugly. You're probably wondering what round two is all about. Yeah. Here on Man vs. Child, we do a lot of challenges with things like caviar, lobster. Caviar, lobster. You love both, I know, Chef Esty. And I love the good stuff. But I was thinking to truly challenge our prodigies and our challenger today, I would make the round two challenge something truly awful. 
Today's round two challenge is awful. Awful, for lack of a better word, is the guts of an animal. The organ meats and the feet. It's all about the stuff that you would normally throw out. They can look scary, they can look a little bit daunting, but if cooked correctly, all of these ingredients can be very tasty. Make sure you understand which protein you're picking and you understand how to cook it. Thank you, Jeff. That was awfully good advice. <laughs> Being an executive chef, you learn to eat everything from the Rudy to the Tootie. I definitely think it gives me an advantage over the kids because I know at that age I've never worked with anything like that before. Chef Holden, now it's time for the big question. Which one of your teammates will be competing with control of the menu board in round two against Chef Augie? I choose Chef Dylan. Chef Dylan has definitely worked with these meats more than any of the prodigies have. He's a great pick for this challenge. When he's not writing children's books, he likes getting his hands dirty in the kitchen. Growing up on a farm, I have worked with these cuts more than a lot of kids have, because my mom loves chicken livers, my grandma loves chicken livers. I am not nervous going up against Chef Augie. He's tough, he knows what he's doing, but I feel like if I just try my best, I can win against him. Please welcome Chef Dylan. I'm looking at him, and I'm thinking, man, he seems like a teenager. He doesn't seem like a little kid. <laughs> Just his kind of demeanor. He acts a little bit older for his age. Let's see what happens. For round two, the menu items are Lifeline. You can ask a judge to provide feedback on one of the components of your dish. Sabotage. Menace your opponent by placing their ingredients back in the pantry as often as you wish. Station vacation. Force your opponent to stop working at any point for five minutes. Chef Dylan, what is your choice? You have to go with station vacation. Yeah! All I have to say is game on. We like that. I like that spirit. I have no problem taking on a challenge. But you know, once you're under the pressure under the gun of timing, you know, that really changes everything. All right, chefs, please take your burners and prepare to begin your cook. You have 45 minutes to make something truly awful, truly delicious. And your time starts now. In round one, I was definitely trying to play a psychological game with the kids, but uh, <laughs> these kids are something else. They are smart. They picked up on that real quick. So knowing that I had lost by a smidge, I've got to really uh, use some technique and some experience and put that into play. I've worked with some of this stuff before. Not a problem. I'm going to take something back to the old country days. So for this dish, I plan on doing fried chicken livers, corn and potato succotash, cheesy grits, and bacon smoked collard greens. First thing I do is I grab the chicken livers, because I know that I've got to soak them in some kind of milk, break down the fibers. Growing up on a farm, I am experienced with livers. So for this round, I'm going to make fried chicken livers with creamed corn and collard greens and hot sauce. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm cleaning my livers. I want to make sure that I don't have any of this yucky white stuff on the livers. I want them to be clean and perfect. And then I'm soaking them in buttermilk and hot sauce. Now, is it true that soaking the liver in and either milk or buttermilk will help kind of mellow the flavor? Yeah, it'll help break it down a little bit because it has the acidity in there. Uh -huh. It also draws out that really minerally flavor that you can often get with the awful, that iron flavor. The bitter flavors. Chef Augie, what are you making? I'm doing a corn and bacon succotash. I knew that I wanted to get some smoky flavor involved in there, so I grabbed some fresh corn, potatoes, bell peppers, smoked bacon. I just put those all together and, and made a really nice uh, succotash. Right now, I'm working on my hot sauce. It's serrano, pepper, and a jalapeno, a little bit of chili flakes. Got some garlic in there, topped off with some white vinegar. I want there to be some spice, but at the same time, I want there to be a little bit of sweetness in my sauce, too. And that's why I'm adding the honey. Because my whole thought process was southern cooking, I really wanted to keep the collard greens as traditional as possible. So I added some bacon fat, added some onions, and some chicken stock, and just let it just go on its own, basically. So next, I'm going to start on my creamed corn and collard greens, similar to the ones that my grandma used to make. So I'm going to detach my little corn kernels. Then I'm taking my rib out of my collard greens. I want it to be nice, long, thick collard greens. Still, at the same time, they're not too overpowering. Where's the sausage for? It's going to be with my creamed corn. Then I'm taking breakfast sausage, kind of mushing it around, make sure it gets cooked in the pan. Then I'll throw in my corn, mix those together, add a little bit of white wine, my collard greens. I'm going to add my cream. I'm going to leave it in the pan to reduce to almost like more of a syrupy form. 
I thought I had to put some fat into the dish. And so I figured, OK, let's make really nice cheesy grits. Let's add some cream. It's got a lot of fat. Let's add some cheese to give it some flavor. It was really going to make that dish just all come together really good. Chefs, are you guys both making some soul food? I'm seeing collard greens over here. What kind of greens did you have, chef? I got collard greens. Collards as well? When I hear that we're both making similar things, I immediately think, OK, I've got to do something different. Wow. Wow. That's bonus points right there. Even the bullpen has to appreciate that move. Come on, guys. I don't know if I want to. I've never worked with them before. I've never cooked them before. But you know what? Let's just try it. Sometimes you got to take some risks. I'll figure something out to do with them. I knew that I wanted to fry the livers. Now I'm going to fry the Rocky Mountain oysters at the same time. It's a pretty ballsy move, right, to accept that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> Chef Augie is looking way too cocky over there. I'm going to have to keep a close eye on him so I know the exact time to you in station vacation. Let's do what's a Rocky Mountain oyster? The part of the male cow where it's how they have babies, so they cut it off. And they and the people usually just throw it out and get rid of it. Oh but now my people God. actually use it to cook. Basically, mm -hmm. looks like a baggie filled with some gross stuff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> SD knows too much. Hey, pal, how are you? Great. What's going on with the actual livers? Well, I'm going to fry them. I'm going to crust them in panko, garlic powder, and a little bit of paprika. OK, so I see you have them marinating in buttermilk and hot sauce? Yes. Well, it's going to give it the tanginess, and then the Tabasco is going to give it kind of the, the mm, you know, a little bit of spice in there. That sounds really, really cool. I just happened to look over, and I realized that Chef Augie is just putting in his proteins. And I'm like, well, perfect. Station vacation. Oh! oh. Chef Augie, step away from everything for five minutes. Wow. Wait, was that the Rocky Mountain oysters or the chicken liver? Both. <laughs> How did you slip that in in mid-conversation? I'm putting it in the fryer. Wow, dastardly. Rocky Mountain oysters and chicken livers can only be in the fryer for about two to three minutes. Chef Augie, was that a tester or was that your real deal? Uh, tester. <laughs> oh! Hold Those weren't that. testers. Testers? I mean, that's a lot of testing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, do you have any other uh, livers uh, anywhere else? Yeah, I do. I have some more back there, yeah. Chef Augie, you're getting a nice golden brown on those livers? Yeah, they're getting there. They're getting there. I knew that the batch that was in there wasn't going to be good. I knew it. I just knew it right from the very beginning. And now it's my pleasure to say, get back to work. I knew immediately that it was overcooked. Five minutes in a fryer was not going to produce quality product. So I'm having to start the proteins all over again because I was on station vacation. Livers, you want to kind of eat it medium rare to medium. And so I have time to fry my chicken livers again. But I got to get some more oysters going. Initially, I thought about frying it, but the oysters left. A little bit bitter uh, uh, taste in my mouth. So I figured, let's pan it instead. I wanted to just kind of get them lightly breaded and lightly sauteed. That way, it would stay uh, really nice and tender. Five minutes remaining. So I'm going to put my livers in the fryer. I'm going to keep them in there just until they kind of like this golden brown. Go about another minute. There is a danger in overcooking chicken livers. They're going to get this stale blood flavor in them. Can't have that happen because it's up to me to keep up the advantage for the third and most important round. I'm feeling really calm. My plate looks beautiful. Hopefully, all the flavors balance out together. Chef Augie has nothing on his plate, which is really cutting it close. Time to think about plating, chefs. As I'm plating this, my grits came out really nice. I suck the tash, looks right on point. But I'm really hoping that the Rocky Mountain Oysters comes out really good. I can't serve awful and nasty protein to the judges. 25 seconds left on the clock, and Chef Augie is just starting to plate. He just got his livers out of the oven. Five, four, three. Two, one. Okay, chefs, please bring your plates up to the judging table. Chef Dylan, please explain what you made for us. I've prepared today fried chicken livers with creamed corn and collard greens with a house-made hot sauce. Chef Dylan, I like your plate. I was hoping for more livers than just two livers. Chef Dylan, this is a very beautiful plate of food. You have a lot of different colors going on, a lot of different textures. I love that you made your own hot sauce. So I'm curious to see how everything comes together. I want my chicken livers to be a star, so hopefully all the flavors balance out together. Well, Chef Dylan, it wasn't awful. It was actually very wonderful. I like the creamed corn. 
Everything really worked. There's a lot of different flavors, but the liver was definitely overcooked. Okay, this is a bad start. One thing that I gotta commend you on is that you really soak them and marinated them for a long time in the buttermilk and the hot sauce. And all that acid and kind of spice really broke down the livers and drew out that minerally flavor. So cook them for less time and they would have been on point. Thank you. Chef Dylan, I really enjoyed your chili condiment. It wasn't like a classic hot sauce. It was knife cuts of chilies and dry chilies and fresh chilies and acidity. It was very fun, colorful, and brightening. The liver was definitely overcooked. You cooked it for about a little over four minutes. Two to three minutes, nice mid-rare. You'll have the perfect crust to marry the perfect liver. Thank you. Chef Augie, please explain what you made for us today. I did some deep fried chicken livers with sweet corn and potato and bacon succotash, white cheddar grits, and then uh, as a little bonus, I got a little ballsy. <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Chef Augie, I think this is a beautiful plate. The livers themselves look nice and crispy. I'm really interested to see how it tastes. Chef Ogie, I'm excited that you used pork fries with the chicken livers, so you have two different types of offals. I like that you have the succotash over the grits with a little red wine reduction. I'm really interested to see how everything tastes. Looks tough to cut. She has to go through it three, four times. You can clean the skin. Knowing the flavor profiles that I had on my dish, I definitely beat his. I'm 01, I can't go 02. Chef Ogie. I like the presentation of the dish, and I really enjoyed your succotash. I like the idea of the potatoes with the creamy grits, the nice slow-cooked vegetables, a little smokiness in there. I really enjoyed the end with the sweet red wine reduction. It all made sense. The veal fries weren't cleaned correctly. They weren't cooked correctly. I want a nice Rocky Mountain. I don't want a Rocky Mountain that I'm, you know, chewing on, something that I don't really enjoy chewing on and, and didn't have all the correct flavors. You know, again, it's an awful. And if you don't work with it correctly, it doesn't work out. And today, it didn't work out. Now, Chef Augie, I really liked where you're going with this dish. Very southern comfort kind of feel. The technique was off on the veal fries. You definitely want to blanch them first, peel them, draw out some of that awful flavor that they do impart by marinating them first. But everything else, I think, really worked for me. I really liked the livers. It was a nice crust on the outside. I think if you had just stuck with those and put more of those on the plate, it would have worked really well. Perfect, thank you. I'd never worked with Rocky Mountain Oysters before, so I should have just played it the livers. All right, guys, you presented us two awfully good dishes. <laughs> Give us a minute to talk. I feel the judges love the plating, but my livers are overcooked, so I'm hoping that I'm safe because they didn't taste that stale bunny taste. Dylan overcooked his liver. My liver was nice and medium, the way you're supposed to eat liver. Hopefully that will be enough to take me over the top. Well, Mike, Alia, who gets to pick an advantage from the menu for the next round? So at the end of the day, we've decided that the advantage goes to... Well, Mike, Alia, who gets to pick an advantage from the menu for the next round? We've decided that the advantage goes to... Chef Dylan. I'm feeling great. My next teammate's going into round for you with another advantage. Good job. Wow, now I'm down 0-2. <laughs> My back is against the wall. I don't know what to think. As always, the third and final round is a trio challenge, meaning each chef will have to create three different dishes. These dishes will then be tasted blindly by our master level chef. Chef Dylan, your team will compete with control of the menu board. But before we get to that, I'd like to present our master level chef to introduce and judge round three. In 2000, he opened his wildly popular gastro pub, Father's Office, where he created the Office Burger and is credited with kicking off the national gourmet burger trend. He's the executive chef and owner of Father's Office and Luke Sean. Please welcome Chef Sang Yoon. Following him on Instagram. Chef Sang Yoon, he is award winning. He makes one of the best burgers in California. He's not going to take any mistakes lightly. Chef, if you would please tell us what is our round three trio today? I think we should take a little vacation. Maybe somewhere sunny, tropical. I want you to take me to oh. Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. That's a whole thing. Hawaii is such a special place to me. The food and the ingredients are spectacular. The seafood, the Kahlua pig, the incredible tropical fruits. I think you're gonna have an amazing time cooking with these beautiful ingredients. All right, chefs, there you have it. It's a Hawaii 3-0. Definitely round two was a little tough, but knowing that I'm gonna be using some, some ingredients that I'm familiar with, it should be a breeze. I'm gonna go work on my tan. Good luck, aloha. We're having a luau. 
Whoever I pick to go into round three is gonna really have to give their best effort and really impress Chef Sang Yoon. It's time now for the big question. Dylan, which one of your remaining teammates is gonna bring it home for the prodigies in round three? I choose Chef Emily. <laughs> Chef Emily really likes Hawaiian food, and I feel she might have a couple of tricks up her sleeve. She's into theater, musicals, and in the kitchen, she wages battle with the grace of a ballerina. I personally love Hawaiian food, especially ahi pokey. It's one of my favorite dishes of all time. This is the perfect challenge for me. Chef Augie has lost round one and two, but I feel like he's not to be underestimated. Please welcome Chef Emily. Yeah! I've got two girls, one's almost as old as Emily is, and I start thinking about my girls, and I'm thinking, man, I've got to compete against her. But then the other side of me is like, no, forget about this. You're here to win. For round three, the menu items are prime time. Take 10 minutes off your opponent's cook time. One-stop shopping. Your opponent will only be allowed one trip to the pantry. You bet your knife. Pick the one knife your opponent will be allowed to use for the challenge. I have to choose one-stop shopping. Oh, man, I've got to be able to get everything I can get in one shopping spree. All right, chefs, please take to the burners and prepare to begin your next cook. Chefs, you have one hour to create a Hawaii-inspired trio. Your dishes will be tasted blindly by Chef Sang Yoon. Remember, this round is for the win. Your time starts now. Talk to me about some of the Pacific Islands flavor profiles. You know, you go to Hawaii, the fish just came in in the morning, sometimes they're butchering as you're walking in. Uh, That's the thing about being out in Hawaii, is just the freshness of the product and the produce that is out there. This is it, this is the last round, and I've been going in 0-2. I really just gotta focus on making sure that everything I do is on point. Chef Augie, it's better to bring too much. I'm not too familiar with Hawaii, but there's a huge Japanese influence in Hawaii, and I have worked with some of the Asian ingredients, so I try to grab every Asian spice that I can think of. I grab some pork belly, and I grab some ahi too, and then I figure, okay, that's very traditional to Hawaiian islands. I don't know what I wanna do. I kind of figured, let me just grab everything. I'll just think of something pretty much on the fly. How's it feel to have more than one trip to the pantry, oh, Emily? It's a luxury. I love it. I've never been to Hawaii, but I go to Hawaiian restaurants a lot, and I learned about Hawaiian cuisine there. For this challenge, I'm going to be making very classic Hawaiian dishes, an ahi pokey, a spam loco moco, and a malasada with a coconut whipped cream. Now I am cooking rice, which is going to be for a loco moco. A loco moco is hamburger meat on top of rice and usually a fried egg. This time I'm doing it with spam because Hawaii uses more spam than the rest of America combined. That's a lot of spam. These kids are fearless. They just kind of go for it. Whereas Augie has an entire career of things he's been told not to do. All right, let's do this. One stop shopping definitely was a wrench in my game, but now I'm eager and ready to go. Chef Augie pretty much raided the pantry of all Asian ingredients. Very smart. And a bunch of pineapples. It's time to figure out what I want to do for the three items that I need on my plate. I'm gonna do the spam, 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 spam. You know what, let's do a slider with the spam that I had grabbed ahi tuna sushi roll, and Colby glazed pork belly. First thing I do is I cut the pork belly up, put it into the bags, and make my Colby glazed marinade because it's very traditional. Ooh, a little Asian marinade. As soon as I put this bag in the sous vide machine, I have nothing to worry about because it works on its own, and that allows the pork to really just come out nice and tender. Chef, less than 45 minutes remain. Right now I'm making an ahi tuna pokey. Tuna! I love tuna. Pokey is a Hawaiian fish salad. I am doing it with ahi tuna today. Ahi is like the butter of fish. In it, I put soy sauce, sesame oil, chili paste, garlic, ginger, and of course, ahi. My ahi pokey is gonna be sitting on top of a taro root chip. So I slice it nice and thin, and I put them in the fryer. I plan on making an ahi tuna sushi roll. I kind of wanted to keep the flavors light, so I add some mango and avocado in there. I think I'm gonna make a relish for the tuna that I have right here. I realized I had in my box of pineapple, and obviously, I mean, that's more Hawaiian than anything else, so let's make a pineapple relish. Put uh, some peppers to it, and I add some coconut as well. For my loco moco, I wanted to make a gravy that I pour on top of this spam and the rice. So I slice up an onion and put it in some stock. Oh, they're Maui onions. Yeah, I'm using every little detail. I use Maui onion because it's from Maui, so how Hawaiian can you get? 
You know, Emily is incredibly focused in the kitchen. She holds herself like someone beyond her years. But surprisingly, in subjects like math and science, she struggles. Being gifted in one field doesn't mean you're gifted in all fields. I want to make a coconut rice for the pork deli, and so I started off by browning the rice a little bit with some shallots and some fresh ginger, and then I want to finish it off with the coconut milk. Oh, no can opener. Chef Augie, did you forget a can opener? Yep, sure did. At least that's a sharp knife. Was a sharp knife. <laughs> <laughs> did the bag pop? Look at the water in the circulator. I mean, it's all dirty. I'm just wondering if the bag popped. It didn't seal properly. Oh, man, that's my Colby glaze. Bag rip. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. There's water in the bag, so it diluted whatever marinade was in there. Ooh. I know that I don't have enough time to do the sous vide process. So you know what? I'm going to Colby glaze it again, throw it in the oven, and braise it, and hope that it comes out nice and tender that way. This is what I do on a daily basis, is putting out fires. It's like knowing how to react. It's time to make my coconut whipped cream for my malasada. I start beating heavy cream with a little bit of coconut extract and powdered sugar. It's going to add extra Hawaiian-ness. All right, Emily, what do you got working on here? This is a coconut whipped cream, which is going to be with the malasada, which is a Hawaiian donut. I've heard of malasada before. I don't think I've ever actually had one, though. They're only in Hawaii, right? I think so, yeah. I need to taste this and see if it's Dude. good. It tastes really good. It's like lick the spoon good. You have 20 minutes, chefs. All right, good luck, Emily. Thanks. All right, this is very cool. What's going on here? You have what looks like a sushi roll, but you're you're pan frying it. Yeah, just really quick. So is that to crisp up the nori? Or yeah, just that... to give it a nice little crisp, a crunch. Awesome. So, Chef Augie, do you feel like you underestimated the kids a little bit? Uh, yeah, definitely. These kids, uh, they're something now. <laughs> All right, good luck. 17 thank you. minutes left. Thank you, thank you, thank you. She doesn't have a dough yet. She hasn't started frying anything. She hasn't started cooking her spam yet. Time is just dripping from the clock, and I haven't even started on my malasada. I melt some butter in a pan, and I add some milk and sugar and lemon juice to it. When I see that the mixture is starting to curdle, I take it off the burner, and I whisk it in some flour until it gets to the consistency that I want. Holy. I put my malasada dough into the fryer, and there is barely any time left. I don't know exactly how long it's going to take. So, I'm not sure if it's gonna get done in time. Augie, okay, is that a spam what you're working on? That's right. My third dish. I'm making my spam slider. Let's make it something that the chef can grab with his hand. I had a soft wine roll. I'll use fennel because it's crunchy, and I'll mix that with some mango and some chili sambal to give it a little bit of heat, a little bit of spice to it. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, what goes with sliders? Shrimp fries go with sliders. Well, I've got my malasada in the fryer. It's time to fry my spam. Now I go to fry my quail egg for my loco moco. Right now, I have a lot of components cooking. I'm starting to get extremely nervous. I'm plating the coconut rice and pork belly, and I'm excited with the result. It's all or nothing at this point. I'm already down, and I don't like losing because my reputation is at stake. Five minutes, chefs. Five minutes left. I start to plate my loco moco. It looks pretty good. And I plate my mahi pokey. It looks amazing and very Hawaiian. But I am still waiting for my malasada. They're not done on the inside. I have to let it cook or it's going to be raw in the middle, but I'm running out of time and I still have to put it in the sugar. I still have to get my coconut whipped cream. Oh, this is intense. 90 seconds. I don't have any time left. I might only have two dishes. Two dishes down. I am still waiting for my malasada. I have to let it cook or it's going to be raw in the middle. Just get it on the plate, Emily. I am running out of time. I finally say, screw I pull out one of the malasadas and get it coated in the sugar. Are they cooked? I hope so. Five, four, three, two, one. Step away from the dishes, please. That was so close. I need a vacation to Hawaii at this point. I think it's pretty. My favorite thing about this trio all together is that it goes from appetizer, entree, dessert. It looks amazing and very Hawaiian. You know what? This doesn't look too bad. <laughs> this is maybe something I put on my menu. <laughs> it would be extremely embarrassing to win first and second and, then lose, and lose third. Chef Emily, what have you prepared for Chef Sang? Today I have prepared an ahi pokey on a taro root chip. Then in the middle I have a spam loco moco. And on the right I have a malasada with coconut whipped cream. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Chef Augie, what did you prepare for Chef Sang? I did a nori wrapped ahi tuna with mango and avocado, coconut and pineapple relish. And then I did a coconut and ginger rice with kalbi glazed pork belly. And then a spam sandwich with fennel slaw and wasabi french fries. Thank you, Chef. All right, well, I'm feeling a little bit sneaky. Guys, would you mind switching the plates around? 
We just want to ensure that this is a truly blind taste test. Chefs, please welcome back your round three, Hawaii trio guest judge and master level chef, Sang Yoon. Exciting. This is a blind taste test, meaning you have no idea who prepared which dish. Remember that you are judging the dishes based on creativity, presentation, adherence to the spirit of the challenge, and taste. Let's try the dish on your right. All right. It really is an honor having a master chef tasting my food right now. I think that my balance of Hawaiian flavors will get in me the one day. Showing with the tuna, perfect. Left raw, wrapped up beautifully. That part of the dish just reminds me of stepping off the plane and into paradise. With the pork, I thought the glaze was really savory, really good seasoning, but I think the dish ate a little sour. The sandwich kind of reminds me of a Hawaiian plate lunch. I like the fennel a lot. The slaw is really nice. I wish the spam was thicker. The spam kind of got lost. I love spam. This is really the, the, the moral of the story. Maybe I should have put a bigger chunk of spam on there, but I feel confident. The dishes that I put together are going to carry me through. Now, please try the dish on your left. My stomach is just really scared, and I'm holding my breath because I'm not sure if my mom thought it is fully cooked. The poke is a great idea. I love tuna poke. Perfect texture, but the seasoning is pretty aggressive. It's eating a little salty. The loco moco, one word, awesome. Great rice, nice big thick piece of spam, that egg right on. This just tastes like lunch on a beach. This is, this is perfect. The malasada, I think, is a, is a brave thing to do. You didn't have a lot of time to cook. It's a little dense and quite sugary. I didn't love the malasada. I love the idea of a malasada. I love to saying the word malasada. Uh, the coconut whipped cream, though, was, was a really great touch. Pretty, pretty damn good. <laughs> pretty, <laughs> I'm gonna take this with me. He is a very renowned chef, and the fact that he's saying that my food is amazing, that's pretty awesome. Thank you, chef. Now, before we announce the winner of tonight's Man vs. Child, prodigies. Enter the kitchen. Being the competitive person that I am, I've got to win round three. When I play, I don't play to lose, I play to win. Will, raw talent and imagination defeat years of training and decades of experience. Who was truly bold and who played it safe? Let's find out. Chef, who's the winner of tonight's Man vs. Child? I really genuinely enjoyed both dishes, but I'm going to have to go with Congratulations, prodigies, you've won. Woo, I did it! It's amazing. We did a completely clean sweep, won every round with an executive level shift. I'm super proud of myself and my team. Chef Sang, could you tell at any point who prepared which dish? I could not. I think both dishes were really cooked with a lot of refinement, care, great effort by both sides. Thank you very much, Chef Sang. My pleasure. Thank you, Augie. You've been a valiant competitor. It's been great. I've had a lot of fun. And we'll see you next time on Man vs. Child. I'm very impressed. I had the interest when I was 11 and 12, but I never had the passion and drive that they have. I mean, I look at that and I'm like, wow, these kids are definitely prodigies.